Howdy folks, this is Richie Gould, Gould Engineering. Uh, the topic today is the new gold recovery plug, the magnetic gold recovery plug associated with the gold bazooka, which is normally the cleanout plug, but we've added a, a device with the cleanout plug to uh, trap uh, fine gold that might otherwise. Uh, get out, uh, swim its way out through the water currents, so uh, this uh, supports my theory of what I happily call Gould's Law, which I made up myself, so I had to give myself credit for it. Anyway, I'm going to call it Gould's Law, and this is my backup uh, for Gould's Law, and the reason is, is uh, we're going to lay out my case here. There's a lot of microphotography in here, so um, we'll just proceed from here. Well, this is me, Reggie Gould, behind the camera as usual. I'm usually not in front of the camera. I'm taking pictures. This is one of our gold outings. And uh, so that's about all I can say about that. Now, this is the uh, proper mining attire for... Uh, all miners, red suspenders, and a hat. So, okay, this is the plug I'm talking about. It's a three inch diameter. Um, the drain plug, this is the plug that's in the belly of the Gould Bazooka. And when you do a clean out, you uh, remove um, this plug and then uh, turn on the water, put it over a five gallon bucket. You can clean out the bazooka. Very simple, less than a five minute cleanup. This is the plug with the addition, a modification I made to it. I took off the uh, bottom plate and replaced it uh, uh, with an insulative uh, material. And uh, the magnets, you can see you're um, looking at the top of it. That's uh, about five, I think, magnets. Um, so that's the thing, the, bottom, the top surface there is going to be the one that collects the gold. Close-up view of the um, insulative material that's sitting on top of that uh, silicon rubber. The, when the rubber, uh, you pull a bolt up on it, the wing nut, that rubber expands and that uh, seals, uh, seals up the hole. So just giving you a little closer look. And this is the infamous cool bazooka dry washer. I took one of my bazookas just for the heck of it and decided to turn it into a dry washer. That means no water. Instead of running on the right hand side, normally we would have a hose connected to that with a nozzle hooked up to a water pump. Instead, I took that off and I put a vertical stack there. There's a pan on top that's what you shoveled into with a little grizzly and uh, feeding that is a leaf blower and the leaf blower is going to generate air which is going to take the place of the water and then the gold is going to separate and collect in that white part which is uh, the bazooka itself. This again is a gold bazooka dry washer just a little far shot so you can see um, a little better view of it. And this old critter is yours truly. And uh, I'm feeding that uh, dry washer I just showed you there, shoveling it in there. And, uh, I got a uh, nasty little shock when I touch it because the thing does develop static electricity on it. Uh, so I kind of worry in touching that metal pan. Okay, this is me again, but this. Uh, picture was taken in probably around December in the dead of winter and uh, we were high banking and uh, this is a new um, a pan that I'm trying out there great little pan uh, and so just give you an idea to uh, something different in the world of the painting okay this fellow is Steve Littner He's my, uh, one of my mining partners. He helped me develop the Gould Bazooka Dredge. We did many hours of research and trial and error. And anyway, he's, uh, he's doing his thing with the shoveling. 
Okay, this is the money shot. This is the uh, microscope camera that I bought. And those little tiny things there, they're little tiny pieces of black sand. Uh, very, very small. Uh, maybe like a smaller than a oh, piece of pepper. They're very tiny. And up above it in the center of the picture, there's several places you can kind of see a yellowish. That's gold. And that gold is being trapped by the magnetic field. And once that they're in the magnetic field, it is trapped, which proves the Gould Law, which I've been talking about for probably the last uh, eight years. But now I have photographic proof that uh, uh, once the gold is caught in the field with the black sand, it will stay there and it will hold there until you release the uh, uh, magnetic field. Again, the same thing, probably a little close up. Uh, the depth of field is terrible in this microscope because it's meant to look at slides where you're just looking at the depth of field of uh, whatever you have on the slide. So uh, kind of in the middle, you can see the gold shows up a little bit better on there. Okay, now that the gold shows up better, what I did is I increased the contrast. And you can see the gold various places up and down there where it's trapped in there. So the, I say it's kind of a, uh, a wash as to what, what you want to look at, but the gold's the most important thing, so that's why I colored it up. Again, um, you can see the, the black sand is, is hanging on the ends of those things, and actually those little pieces of black sand are linked together by the ma forces of the magnetic field. As the flux of the magnet goes from north to south, uh, they'll follow that field, and uh, uh, rather than taking the path of air, if you've got something uh, that's a more conductive to the uh, magnetic flux lines, uh, that's what these little guys will do, so it works out perfect. Okay, this is um, it's out of focus, but what I was trying to do is focus in on the gold that's a yellow. I have no clue as what those little blue rocks are, but uh, the gold is scattered all through there. Another interesting picture, and um, this is again, you can see that each one is headed towards the um, um, the opposite pole. If this were the North Pole, it's head for the South Pole, and and so the lines of flux are bending around so that you can see that's where they're pointed to. They're just following the, the lines of uh, magnetic force, and of course the gold's going to get caught all through that uh, black sand. This was uh, taken with a more powerful magnet, and uh, you can see that's why it's so much more dense. Uh, black sand, but still it's the same thing. Uh, little little pieces of black sand are, are trying to point their way to the other uh, magnetic pole. Again, just another shot, uh, uh, real high density of, of black sand looking out the top of it. Okay, here you can see um, off kind of to the right towards the bottom, there's a yellowish chunk there. It's a larger piece of gold, and then there's little, and, what, and these are actually micron pieces of gold. Some of them are so small in there you couldn't see them without a microscope. But I, I wouldn't even guess how big that big one is. It might be uh, two thousandths of an inch. I don't have a clue to, for a measurement, sorry. Okay, now you can see there's uh, one to the right lower to go one in the center one to the upper left and then one to the very upper top of the left those are little larger pieces of gold again looks like a new uh, hairdo for the radical uh, <laughs> teenagers anyway you 
you can see the outreaching there following the flux and except it's just little magnifications reduced uh, so I can get a little better depth of field. Yeah, again, um, little tiny flecks of gold are spread all through there, and they're kind of like the little, looks like little white specks in there. I believe this is, uh, yeah, and um, if you look at the very upper uh, left-hand corner, you see that's one of those uh, super magnets. This one happens to be a 50-pound magnet that's only uh, three quarters of an inch in diameter, three quarters of an inch high, but it's super, super powerful. So this uh, magnetic sand is really, uh, really bunched up in this one. Another shot of the super magnet. Okay, now we have a picture of actually the real hardware. This uh, happens to be the magnetic plug. And of course the magnets are um, donuts, I guess a donut magnet, so that's why there's no black sand in the center because there's a hole there, so I better put a, a disc over there so the black sand doesn't go inside of it because to do a cleanup you have to brush it off. So um, anyway, this this is the final thing where it would what it would look like when you're actually uh, uh, getting the gold in the, in the gold bazooka. Another picture of the gold plug, except it's more to the side. You can see above the black sand, those are the actual magnets, but they, they stick where they come out rather than on the side of the magnet. These were actually taken with little button magnets, which are probably half an inch in diameter, maybe a quarter of an inch high. And uh, the, some of the first ones I started using, you, you can see the gold upper right hand corner. It's just kind of, where it looked kind of yellowish, that's gold. Another shot of the uh, magnetic gold uh, plug. And you can see upper left, there's a piece of gold there. It's just spread all through it. Okay, this is a higher magnification and um, it's a little bit out of focus. It's really hard to focus this thing. It's uh, it's not like a regular microscope. It's, a, it's almost like a handheld device and it's really difficult to set the focus on it, but uh, did the best I could. Again, um, I tried to bring up the contrast so you could see the gold. Uh, uh, and like I say, the foreground is out of focus with the rear because it's either either the rear is in focus or the foreground because of the, the depth of field. And again, um, you can see all those little, little tiny specks of black sand all piling up. Okay, this was another experiment. I took a... A steel wire brush and I put the magnet up on top where the wooden handle is and uh, I was going to see what the effect would be and the field actually comes out to the ends <laughs> of the wire and then again they start pointing towards the magnetic field and this magnet I'm using is that 50 pound uh, uh, super magnet and uh, I believe these are the button magnets little small magnets Again, I've increased the contrast to try to bring out the gold. It's very difficult. This was a large piece of gold that I blew up and uh, it has a unique pattern. It almost looks like a face, two eyes and a spooky mouth. <laughs> That'd be just fun to throw it in there. Again, these are the button magnets and the higher contrast, uh, trying to get a better view of where that gold's at. Okay, we're back to Mr. Brush again, and you can see the um, magnetic field is radiating uh, out from each one of those little steel wires, and um, which is unique. I thought it'd stick to the side of them, but it didn't. Decided to come out to the wire, so it's following the field, and then they're bending back uh, to try to get to the other side of the magnet. Okay, this is again um, showing the... Um, um, little black sand beads all they keep building out until they finally the, the field just can't hold them then they fall off so that's where the uh, the weight of them 
uh, exceeds the ability of the field to hold them in. And this is another picture of the um, magnetic gold recovery plug. And uh, there's, I see a piece of gold there to the left upper. That, uh, I guess I should have zoomed in on them more. But I wanted to show how the, the actual plug looks like. Here's a good view of the uh, magnetic uh, gold recovery plug, which I had earlier. Here's another shot of it. This concludes our presentation, uh, Gould Engineering. Website is www.gouldeng.com. My email is gould at gouldeng.com. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the uh, 